Hi, I'm John Trey, and care pastor at Christian Life Fellowship in Clear, Alabama. And I'm doing a series of teachings on five biblical antidotes to the poison of unhealthy fear. Now, yesterday, let me just do a quick review. We covered antidote number one, which is the truth. In our last video, we talked about the truth being a key ingredient to the biblical antidote for the poison of unhealthy fear. In that teaching, we learned that fear is a common human experience, and it's often rooted in a distorted perception of the past, the future, or present threats. We also spoke of the grief process as being a common uh, human experience that we each to some degree may be experiencing due to the loss of freedoms, loss of fellowship, loss of financial incomes, etc. If you're struggling with these issues, I encourage you to go back and watch that first video so that you can build on a solid foundation of facts based on the truth of God's word. Truth is a key ingredient to dispelling our fears. In this video today, I'd like to connect the concept of truth that we spoke about last time with the love of God. That's a biblical connection as well. Let's read from Ephesians chapter four, beginning at verse 14. Paul says, as a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine or by the trickery of men or by the craftiness of deceitful scheming. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. And then verse 23 in that same chapter, and that you being renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. You see here how Paul tied together the principles of truth and love Verse 14 tells us that truth is what anchors us and keeps us from being tossed around by every wind of doctrine and trickery and deceit. Now the coronavirus threat is real, but our minds and emotions want to trick us into fearing that God somehow has abandoned us or doesn't love us or that something is going to happen to us that God doesn't know about or doesn't care about. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now I'd like to follow Paul's admonition and speak the truth to you in love. Here's the truth. This is what the scripture says about God's response to fear. It's from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Paul says to Timothy, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. You see what God has given to us? Not fear but a threefold gift of power, love, and a sound mind. This fear is a lie. It's a misperception, a distortion, a self-deception that we believe. When we look closer at that word fear that Paul used here, we find that it's actually the Greek word dahlia, and it means an intimidation or being very timid, being apprehensive. It has to do with cowardice. This spirit is not from God. So if you're feeling intimidated or overwhelmed and cowering in a corner, that's not how God intends for us to live, even in the midst of a pandemic. Now, please understand, as we talked about last time, we're supposed to use wisdom when dealing with genuine threats. And according to Romans 13, verse 1, Paul says, every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. We're expected to be obedient to those in authority over us and do exactly what our government is telling us to do as far as protecting ourselves during this time of pandemic. But instead of fear, God has provided us with this threefold gift. The first part of this gift is power. This is the word dunamis. It's where we get our word dynamite. It speaks of divine might to overcome, to get her done, and to win. God wants us to be victorious and to overcome fear. The key in overcoming fear is not just sheer power, though. Overcoming fear 
is also rooted in God's gift of love. Right in the middle, a position that indicates centrality and importance is this gift of love that Paul included. The gift of God's love. The word here that is used is agape. You're probably familiar with that. You've probably heard that word before. It's a divine love, a divine assurance that's provided through the abiding presence of his spirit. And it's really the keystone of truth that displaces and replaces our fears to enable us to maintain victory, to give us power over our fears. The third part of God's gift to us in the face of fearful intimidation, Paul says, is a sound mind. And that word can literally be translated sanity. This word that Paul used has to do with confidence, discipline, that comes as a result of the Spirit's control. It's rooted in a divine certainty and stability that only the abiding presence of his Holy Spirit can provide and maintain in us. So now let's read that verse again and add in these additional insights that we've gained through this brief study. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or intimidation or timidity or apprehension or cowardice, but of power, dunamis, dynamite power, divine might, to overcome, to get her done, and to win, and love, an agape love, a divine assurance that provides God's abiding, unconditional, passionate caring, constantly reminding us that God cares for us, and a sound mind, a confidence, a sanity, a discipline, a self-control that comes through the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit and produces in us a divine certainty and stability. I'd like to finish up this teaching today with another uh, dose of truth about God's love from 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, where it's written, casting all your anxiety, in some versions it says cares, but the word there literally means anxiety, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In his book that I recommended to you in the last video, Safe in the Storm by Phil Moser, he says the following about this verse. First Peter is one of the sweetest verses in the Bible. Peter recorded this truth for people who were under severe persecution. He writes, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. We all have the desire to control things that we cannot, and we often forget how deeply God cares for us. If I had authored this verse myself, I might have chosen a different quality of God to emphasize, something like his perfect wisdom, his unlimited power. Logically, it would have made more sense to think that even though I am not in control, an all-wise, all-powerful God is. But the Holy Spirit saw here to inspire Peter otherwise, and I'm glad he did. Phil Moser goes on to write, when it comes to anxiety, he chose to emphasize the compassionate, softer side of God. When I am fearful, I find comfort in this truth. I'm not alone in my struggle, and God cares. The challenge, of course, is that anxiety can wake us up at 3 a.m. The silence in our home can echo a message, no one's here, no one cares. But even in those times, we can feel so very alone we can stare into the darkness trying to find a reasonable solution to the trouble we're in. Our anxious thoughts are all our own. They whisper deceitfully, uh, no one knows, no one cares. But the Bible tells us this is not true. It may be true that some smiling people around you are clueless to your difficulties. It may even be true that some of them, even if they did know, wouldn't care. But God knows and God cares. That's why the first principle of overcoming anxiety is belief. You and I must learn to believe God's word, not our feelings. That's what Phil Moser had to say. That leads us now very nicely into our next antidote for unhealthy fear, which is faith, and we'll talk more about that next time. Until then, please know that we care about you, we're praying for you, God loves you, and he wants you to get through this in a peaceful manner. That's the goal. God bless you today.